row. Who was that? <laughs> oh, he's a comedian in the bunch. It's Veterans Day, it's not uh, open mic night. I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Uh, and uh, for those of you that came in and saw the military vehicle on display, I'm happy to tell you that there's several more out there now. Uh, apparently there was a traffic jam on Route 30 or Sauk Trail, so um, they have multiplied since you came in. Uh, and I think you'll enjoy them when, they, when you go back out there. Here, courtesy of the Veterans Garage, which is an endeavor uh, in Mokina. It's uh, spearheaded by a gentleman by the name of Joe Warner. He uh, used to be the mayor of Mokina. Uh, really uh, uh, has a soft spot in his heart for doing all things uh, military related, uh, whether it's for folks that are serving now or for veterans who have served in the past. So I encourage you to take a look at those vehicles and find out a little bit more about them. Uh, if we could, I'd like to move on with our program and ask for the posting of the colors. celebration here in the Village of Park Forest. Some of you I know know the history of the Village of Park Forest even better than I, but for those who don't, uh, there's a reason why Park Forest is called a GI Town. Actually, there's a book that's titled GI Town, and it's the story of Park Forest. It's because after World War II, veterans were finding it very difficult to find housing. And so uh, Nathan Manilow and uh, Phil Klutznick and uh, a few of their colleagues, they developed this plan to create a community where there would be the opportunity for veterans to find housing. And that was really the, the impetus for the creation of Park Forest. And from that time forward, of course, there have been a lot of others who have come to our community, some of whom have been veterans of uh, the Korean conflict, of uh, Vietnam, of uh, Desert Storm, and we now are in a position of where we would like to welcome to our community as much as possible veterans of Afghanistan and Iraq, because we believe that Park Force is a community that's dedicated and committed to veterans. And one of the things that I have a desire to accomplish uh, as long as I'm mayor, before I quit being mayor in the Village Park Forest, is to see some of the housing that we have that's gone into foreclosure and is vacant, given over in some fashion or another in the most economical way possible for housing for our veterans who are returning from those most recent right. conflicts. serve on two 
committees of the National League of Cities where this particular topic has become one of the major issues that is being talked about at the national level. And there actually are two components in terms of how we address the veterans issue. The first one is the fact that there are a lot of veterans who are on the streets, homeless. And this is true in our region as well as other areas around the country. And there are some cities now that are actually homeless free as relates to veterans because of programs that have been put into place that are specifically designed for that intention. And so that's another thing that we would like to see in our region, that we find ways to accommodate those that are homeless, particularly the veterans, but other homeless also, and that we find them the kind of housing that they need so that their lives can be rich and fulfilled. So when we mark this occasion today, we pay tribute to all of the veterans that have served our country, and we're very proud to have so many of them in the village of Park Forest. We also want to remember that there are still things that we have to do. There are still projects that have to be completed. And the housing issue is one, I think, that's of paramount importance. And I would just suggest to you, if you are interested in the history of the Village Park Forest, like I am and a lot of other people are, take a look at the beautiful mural that's out in our lobby. And I want to compliment our village manager because he played such a key role in making sure that that, that uh, mural was created. But it tells the story of Park Forest, and it tells it in terms of a lot of individuals who have served in the military. So we say thank you to all of our veterans and all of those who are currently serving in the military. And we appreciate this opportunity that all of you have come out today along with us to celebrate the, the veterans of our community. So thank you very much and enjoy the program. wasn't my vision for the, the mural in the lobby of Freedom Hall. Uh, I had this idea, uh, but Chuck Sabe, who was kind of one, one of the keepers of Freedom Hall, uh, really had a uh, significant hand in that. Uh, and one of the things I'm most proud about that mural is, uh, like a lot of the other murals in Park Forest, uh, just about everybody depicted in there from World War II up until the present uh, is a Park Forest resident, either of the past or currently. Uh, and I think that that really is neat when you've got that kind of artwork in your in your community's facilities and people who walk in the door can actually see people that are from their families, uh, their neighbors, their friends. Uh, I know that uh, there's at least uh, a couple of people in the audience today. Uh, Joanne Letourneau is in the audience. Her daughter, uh, U.S. Marine, is, is depicted. Uh, also, uh, John Ryan, uh, who is actually, I think there's a picture of him in there in his uh, military uh, fatigues, and then uh, there was kind of a back then, and this is now. Uh, there's two people in that mural that are uh, in their military uniforms when they were 19, 20 years old, and then again when they were in their 60s and 70s. Mr. Ryan, and then uh, Montford Point Marine uh, at Pfizer, who is, I think, one of our most <coughs> senior uh, veterans in Park Forest. As I continue uh, with our program, I think what I'd like to do is I would like to have us do our national anthem, then I've got a few comments, and then we're going to have uh, the show begin, uh, the concert itself. So, Lauren, if you could join us, please rise for the national anthem. Oh, 
crowd actually gets involved with things like that. Uh, I think one of my all-time favorite national anthems is when my wife and I went to Boston uh, a number of years ago, and they did uh, uh, the seventh inning stretch, and then they did the national anthem. I thought, no, national anthem, the beginning of the game. And it was, I've been to plenty of baseball games at Wrigley, and I've been to plenty of baseball games at Comiskey Park, uh, but that by far was the best national anthem I ever saw. Uh, and our crowd here is, is uh, very uh, apropos as well as far as joining in. Uh, so Lauren didn't have to put up there and sing it by herself. We've all done Lauren. Uh, as we continue our program, uh, I'd like to thank our uh, committee who was involved with putting together the program and the displays that we have. That includes the Bloom ROTC, uh, who posted the colors for us. Uh, the wonderful voice of Lauren O'Kane. And all the young ones in the audience who led us the Pledge of the Flag. Thank you, I'd like to single out Judy Lancaster and Chuck Savior for the good work. Uh, Judy put together the program and coordinated a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that helps make events like this go off uh, uh, pretty well put together. Chuck, on the other hand, was instrumental in securing the wonderful performing that performer that will be taking the stage in a few minutes. Uh, he also was the linkage to get the veterans uh, garage to come out uh, and uh, join us as well. I think they've been to a number of our programs uh, over the years. And I would encourage you to find out a little bit more about them. I think uh, they're really interesting. They've got a growing um, fleet of vehicles and military equipment. Uh, you might want to check that out if you're really into veteran stuff and military era uh, items. Uh, over the years, I've varied my comments uh, on the Park Force Veterans Day program. And this year, I'd like to uh, continue with the theme of appreciation. Uh, First off, I guess I'd like to ask if there are any veterans in attendance today, and if so, if they could all stand and recognize them. Thank you. Next, uh, if we could, do we have any World War II or Korean veterans in attendance? If you could rise, up, put your hand in the air. <laughs> Myself, I'm a Desert Storm veteran uh, from the United States Marines. I served from 88 to 92, so I think I, I can say this just a little bit. Day is not for people that uh, served in my era and, and going forward, and uh, I mean that as no disrespect. Uh, but I really think Veterans Day is about recognizing those folks that are from our greatest generation, uh, folks that served in World War One, World War Two, uh, Korea, up into Vietnam. Uh, I think the things that our country does now for its veterans, uh, its uh, returning service men and women from serving abroad, are tremendous. Uh, when I came back from serving in Desert Storm, I was overwhelmed with the outpouring of support from the community. And I believe that there's some, some folks that to return from uh, serving abroad and doing their job, and they weren't treated the same way. And I think it's really important that we do everything we can to recognize them. Uh, it's for the actions of those folks, uh, those folks that served in Vietnam and Korea, World War II, uh, is why we have the country that we have nowadays, and I can't say it enough. Thank you. Yeah. Ned Pfizer, uh, and I think I mentioned him just about every uh, Veterans program, every Veterans Day program we have. Uh, he's not with us today, as I can see. He's probably got some other obligation, uh, but he is a World War II Marine veteran, uh, and quite frankly, he is my favorite uh, veteran at this time. Uh, he's a fascinating person. If you don't know who he is, uh, I think Charles Thomas on ABC News used to say he had this segment about someone you should know. If you don't know, uh, if you don't know Ed Pfizer, you need to get to know him. Um, he now has the title of my favorite uh, military veteran. Um, unfortunately, my grandfather passed away this past summer. He used to have that title. Uh, he was also a World War II Marine, uh, and uh, like Ed, they really aren't about talking about what their service was. Uh, it's all about uh, serving the community, uh, doing the right thing. Uh, so if you get the chance, uh, I would encourage you to find out who he is. Uh, there's actually books about Ed Pfizer in the library. Uh, he's been recognized in the White House. 
on Capitol Hill and a number of times. Find out more about him because he lives in our community. Uh, today's program caps a wonderful week on, a weekend at Park Forest Freedom Hall. Uh, the Freedom Hall concert series saw the Slide Brothers perform this past Friday night. Uh, and then yesterday morning we had the annual Park Forest Police Department's Honor Ceremony. That ceremony was, uh, I think, as impressive as I've ever seen. Uh, we had two of our police officers uh, be recognized with the Medal of Valor, uh, which is the highest form of recognition that can be given out to a, to a police officer, and it's, it's only been awarded a handful of times in the 16 years I've been with the village. Uh, so I'm really uh, excited that we had these things happening in Park Forest Freedom Hall, a fabulous facility. If you haven't been here before and you want to come out again, uh, there's details in the lobby about what takes place at, at Freedom Hall. There's the main series, there's the senior series, uh, and then there's children's theater. Uh, who hasn't been to Park Forest Freedom Hall before? You gotta come back out, you won't be disappointed. Uh, the proverbial, there's, uh, there's no such thing as a bad seat in the house as you can see. With the honor ceremony that took place yesterday, uh, police and fire first responders are much like those in the military that they work in the service of their community, of our community. Uh, there's a brotherhood amongst there's a brotherhood amongst first responders, just like there's a brotherhood and a sisterhood amongst veterans. Uh, I was with my family at a place called uh, Flying Tigers on Friday night. Uh, it's a military surplus store that's up in Oak Forest, a place where you can get all kinds of neat little things if you've served in the military. Uh, and I was looking to replenish my stock of pins and flags, and uh, I was actually uh, uh, not surprised when I was looking for a couple of flags for the Marine Corps, and they were sold out. Um, but I joked a little bit. And I said, uh, what's all this army stuff here? You know, does anybody actually buy this stuff? Uh, and uh, he kind of looked at me. He didn't know what to say. Uh, and I think, I, I think it was clear that he hadn't served in the military uh, because there's this kind of uh, yin and yang amongst veterans. Uh, and it's kind of like uh, a family of brothers or you know, siblings where you can say what you want about your sibling, but nobody else will ever say anything. Uh, and there is a little bit of that, you know, that yin and yang with folks in the, the Army and the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's great. Uh, but don't let anybody say anything outside of the military service uh, because they really don't have the shoes that they've worn to be able to say things along those lines. Um, as I've done in the past, I would encourage each of you in attendance uh, over the next few days uh, to take some time to thank a veteran uh, or offer a kind word or action of support for a family with someone that's currently serving in harm's way, somebody who's serving abroad right now. Over the years I've been uh, on the both uh, the giving end and the receiving end of such acts of kindness and appreciation, be it for my tour of duty in the military or as relates to somebody else's military service. Uh, from a personal standpoint, I'm much happier extending uh, the wishes of Happy Veterans Day to somebody else than receiving them myself uh, on my own uh, behalf. Um, but as good as such sentiments might make me feel, I get more satisfaction, especially with the seniors that are in attendance today. Uh, just on a, uh, a uh, small note, uh, great weekend for veterans. Uh, for those of you that may understand what Tongue Tavern is uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, there's a certain uh, uh, occasion that marks 239 years tomorrow. Uh, I'll leave it at that. If you don't know what the rest of that story is, sitting here you're going to have to do a little bit of research with Google, uh, and you'll know how that story ends. 